I don't think people choose particle physics. Particle physics chooses you. Physics is the place where, for the insatiably curious kid, very little to do with natural smartness. I want to make that very clear. Like, I am not a genius. The people that work at CERN are not geniuses. We are regular people who had the right people in our lives at the right time to encourage us to study this kind of stuff. Particle physics, it's a subject meant for those of you that absolutely love learning about how the world works. From supergiant stars and black holes to the tiniest subatomic particles. If you're a curious person with a passion for science and a million different questions, this is the field you should definitely consider exploring. Today, we'll be speaking to Dr. James Beecham, a particle physicist at CERN who's worked with some of the most interesting topics in modern physics such as the discovery of the Higgs boson particle. So, what does it take to become a particle physicist? And how does one reach the same level of success? Well, let's hear it from Dr. Beecham himself. What is it about particle physics, specifically your field, that makes it so different from the rest of science? Was there any one moment that made you go, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life? Huh, that's a very good question. So particle physics is the study of the fundamental building blocks of the universe uh, and the way that those building blocks interact and work together to eventually lead to the universe that we see and experience and live in right now. So as you can see, it's a fairly fundamental thing. And in fact, there's nothing more fundamental than particle physics. It's uh, that's that's it. That's the edge of our human knowledge. And that's why, you know, as a child, I was attracted to not particle physics per se, because I don't think, I really don't think particle physics, I don't think people choose particle physics. Particle physics chooses you. If So you realize that when you ask a very simple, seemingly childlike question, like what, how small can I cut anything? You're secretly asking a much more profound question to begin with, which is what was holding anything together to begin with? And it turns out that Again, when you ask this question, it turns out that our universe is made of these small, tiny, fundamental building blocks, and they interact via exchanging other kinds of particles known as force carrying particles. So particles and forces and fields, that's it. That's all that our universe is made up of. And so in principle, if you have a full and complete description of particle physics, you have a full and complete description of the entire universe. Um, but if you're the child who always asks the kind of how and why question behind the how and why question, eventually you end up in physics. So that's the place where physics is the place where for the insatiably curious kid who could never accept uh, the answers to other things. So, you know, the physicist is the one if you ever if you ever uh, if you ever come to the physicist and tell, you know, they ask you, oh, what causes this phenomenon? And you tell the physicist, oh, that's just the way it is. The physicist will not be satisfied with your answer <laughs> any in any way at all, right? How did you get to this level of specialization, though, as just, you know, being a small child who's interested in physics and who really wants to learn more about it? How, what was the whole journey like? Yeah, so my journey, in fact, was kind of strange. Uh, all that stuff that I said about as a child, I was attracted to these very fundamental questions. In fact, I, as also as a child, I was very attracted to art and uh, uh, specifically cinema. So in fact, I have a completely separate bachelor's degree in film studies. I did a cinema uh, degree, but then I realized soon afterwards that I was still obsessed with physics and math. And I realized I was doing myself a disservice if I didn't study this formally. I can't, you know, there's not, not nothing so impressive out my window, but this is, I'm here at CERN. And so now I work here as a, uh, you know, as a particle physicist. And so, yeah, again, I had a strange trajectory. I went, I did some film first, and, but I never, I didn't really give up film. I still do my own projects and things. I still maintain an artistic practice. Um, and, but I also got a PhD in physics and then I uh, got a postdoctoral researcher position uh, with an American university, but based here in Switzerland full time. So I've lived here in Switzerland for years now uh, doing research with the Lawrence experiment in human history, uh, where we recreate the conditions of the universe as they were a fraction of a second after the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. Uh, because understanding what will happen, what happened back then will help us understand the universe we have now and could help us explain some of the such as what is dark matter? Why is there more matter than antimatter in the universe? Uh, why are there? Why? Why? Why is gravity so weak compared to the other forces? 
happened at the moment of the the universe's uh, birth? How does everything around us work? These are the kinds of questions that we try to answer. So yeah, that's you know my trajectory took me through some fits and starts, but um, yeah, now eventually I you know got my PhD and now I work uh, here at CERN. We're we're we ha as physicists we have to be combination experimental physicists. We have to be combinations of mathematicians, theorists, uh, uh, electronics experts, hardware experts. Um, we have to be physicists, of course, uh, we have to be philosophers, and then we also have to be programmers and data scientists at the end of the day, and statisticians. We have to be a Swiss army knife, um, because all of these things are just in the service of us as humans trying to understand better how the universe works. We're not trying to make a profit, we're not trying to make a product where there's no military applications at all. There's nothing nothing like this. We're not trying to find energy sources. We're strictly curious about the universe, how everything started, how everything around us works, and what's the future of the universe. I guess the question that comes to mind is, a subject that is so driven by just curiosity and the desire to understand the universe, how can you ever make a career out of it? How do you ever get paid for it? How do you make commercial a subject like that? Yeah, so it's a good question. This kind of research is very unique uh, in the world because, you know, again, like I said, it's it comes from a point, a place of simply humans trying to expand our knowledge, right? We want to know... You know, we want to know what's at the edge of the universe. Uh, we we want to know what dark matter is. Like that's one of the biggest uh, biggest open questions in science is what is dark matter? Anytime our species as humans, anytime our, our civilization does something it's never done before. And you know, when you need a 27 kilometer uh, circular uh, collider, like the Large Hadron Collider, you can't just call up, you know, and say, hey, we want to order one off the shelf, right? It's like, you have to build this yourself. You have to invent all these technologies. Every time our species does something that's never done before, inevitably there will be other technologies that will be invented and innovated that can then be moved to private sector, for example. Again, that's not the reason why we do this research. I don't care about products. I don't care about profits. I, you know, there are more important things to me. But if someone's interested in how this kind of research translates over to, you know, the kind of practical world in a way, there are umpteen dozen there's always examples so there's always these kinds of uh uh you know innovations that will come about when our species pushes itself beyond its current boundaries but again that's not the reason why we do this research this research is funded and it's given priority by world uh governments and world you know peoples because it is valuable to us strictly as for us to understand ourselves you know our human place in the universe understand who we as humans are how we relate to the universe and so to make a career out of this kind of thing is actually quite hard it's uh it's uh to be able to do this indefinitely uh in a kind of permanent way you need to become eventually become a professor or like a, a an employee at a laboratory um, and those positions are very small number of them. So the field relies upon a large number of uh, graduate students and uh, doctoral researchers like me. A lot of my colleagues, they become data scientists at places like, you know, Apple or Google or Expedia or something like this. Um, other people, they um, they become uh they go into finance or they go into banking or something like that. It doesn't matter if it's dark matter or Higgs boson, or it doesn't matter if it's like a, you know, a factory or like a, you know, an economic system. Physicists are really good at finding the the root causes of things and really understand what's what's happening deep down inside and then moving forward and, you know, kind of understanding the big picture about things as well at the same time. So, you know, making a career out of particle physics, it can be hard, um, but it's also a privilege to be able to go along, you know, even start in that path and then eventually decide you'd like to pursue something else. You can, in fact, get started really early. I mean, I've had I've been approached by high school students before who uh, were interested in this kind of research and we found a project for them to work on. But mostly you go to university, you uh, major in physics and even at a university level at the undergraduate level you can start to get involved in this kind of research with one of the professors at your university who works on this kind of research you in fact you can go and volunteer you can say hey i'm interested you know just kind of sitting in on your meetings or maybe you know i know how to code in uh, c or python and i can help a little bit no one's going to get rich discovering the higgs boson but Again, for a lot of us, there are more important things than, you know, than uh, chasing, uh, you know, billions of dollars. That's kind of hollow at its core uh, for a lot of us. And, you know, dark matter is way more interesting than that.
Students often read about personalities like yourself who've you know reached such a great level of success in a field like uh, physics and thoughts like what if i'm not smart enough or where i live no one does science this often demotivates a lot of people what would you say to these students to help them get to where you are today yeah it's a really good question because so much of you know we're talking about billionaires and you know making money so much of that is luck and chance but also in broader society right we know that being able to even go to get a phd is also sometimes of luck and chance right if you're if you're not born into a family where science is prioritized or education is prioritized then it's not going to be so accessible to you right um and if you find yourself as someone who's a child who's you know as a kid who's like interested in these things then it's really tough for you it's like an uphill battle to be able to make it you know to like envision this is a possibility for you but it absolutely is and in fact it has it, honestly it has very little to do with natural smartness i want to make that very clear like i am not a genius the people that work at cern are not geniuses we are regular people who had the right people in our lives at the right time to encourage us to study this kind of stuff in detail right because what this kind of research requires what being a physicist requires is really uh the space to the space in your mind and in your life to and concentrate and it also requires time and it requires uh persistence really a dozens but at the end of the day anybody can do this i firmly firmly believe that um and it does really not it has nothing to do with whether you think you're naturally smart or especially it has nothing to do if someone told you at some point that no you're not very good at math or no you'll never be good at that's crazy don't listen to that person they're they're wrong but it, sometimes it's it, it can be a challenge to for example find a teacher or a, or a mentor or somebody who can be patient enough to understand what your learning style is and make sure that the teaching is tailored to that instead that part i i unfortunately can't i don't have a magic answer for how to again magic does but I don't have an answer for how to disrupt that for some people. But for anybody in general, I would say it has very, very little to do with natural talent. You can literally just email. And again, a lot of the professors are still old school. So don't try to like just Instagram DM them or something. Instead, email them, use old school email, email them at their academic uh, uh, re, uh, you know, email address and tell them it's like, hey, I'm really interested in dark matter. I'm interested because it's so curious to me and I have no idea what's going on. Would you, you know, I want to know more about it. Uh, would you have time to, you know, chat with me? And then you go, you, in fact, you can sometimes go to the, again, if one person doesn't answer or one person says, no, you're too young, then go to the next person. So yeah, just never, never accept the lack of an answer or a no as indication that you should not be interested in this stuff. You should have be interested in these things don't ever let anyone make you feel small for your enthusiasms about you know science and and mathematics and but from a kind of pure perspective right again we will we will always have all of us will always have somebody in our life whether it's a you know parent or a sibling or an uncle or brother or you know grand uncle or whatever that says oh you're interested in physics well what company are you going to work at says so, you know okay you'll always have those people always going to be there right but you don't have to work at a company that's not only thing that's not the the only thing that that indicates um happiness in the world we're trying to answer some of the most basic questions that humans have asked themselves ever like that every single person here has probably asked themselves are the following where did we come from <laughs> how does everything around us work and then where are we going that's it that's that's the kind of questions that science that particle physics is trying to answer from a scientific perspective of course right because it's all materialistic it's like what were the conditions of the material world that led to what we see now and then what will it eventually evolve right to and so these things you know these are the kinds of questions that we're trying to address in a very controlled way this is science teens where we meet experts and ask questions that can help you make the right study and career decisions in the sciences i do this as a fellow student So your support through a like and subscription will give me and everyone working on this channel a lot of encouragement.